for we are filling up the goods our goods at the customer's place so in this case our goods are relevant for consignment seller so our goods are relevant for delivery but they are not relevant for billing so i told you to look into that um, item category did you not at okay so no problem okay when do you remember or shall we skip this cycle and go to the next topic yeah yeah you can skip it yes okay no problem yeah it is still in our chart Okay, fine. Okay, today then we will start with a new scenario. Uh, have you ever heard of this third-party scenario? Ah, uh, what? What it is? What it is? No, no, no. Just, just tell whatever you know. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. That is a normal. That's a very normal scenario. So in some cases, okay. Based on the structure, what you had said. So let me say, like, there is somebody who places order to you. Okay. But you, you say like. Uh, that could be some reasons either you are running out of stock or as a policy you don't um stock that particular material okay so what you do but you receive the sales order you write a sales order but instead of you creating the delivery you are going to tell your vendor saying that uh, see my client is uh, requiring so much of quantity so you do and say you deliver to my client i will pay it to you Okay, you don't uh, take a payment from my client. Okay, you deliver the goods to my client, uh, and I will uh, pay pay you for that. Okay, so once you pay your customer, I mean your vendor, then you will be able to invoice your customer based on the quantity what he or she has received. Okay, so why this is third party called? The delivery is not being done from you. Instead, the delivery is being carried out. by your vendor i mean that is the some third, third party okay so that is the thing here you can use the same sales order or uh, your standard sales order that is not a problem only thing here is like the item category so here after the certain uh, scenarios what we are seeing uh, we could see i mean even in that yesterday scenario the consignment scenario we could see that consignment item category play a major role Okay, that's why I, I I told you to you go through the consignment. I mean, item category field for yourself and let me know. Okay. So in this case, so what is the standard item category we derive in our sales order? Anybody? The standard standard item category C A N. Yeah. Okay. So what is the determination rule for C A N? How the system determines as C A N? Okay. I have level item, but it's fine. Okay. One, that last one is important one. No. No hierarchy here. Item category group. Okay. so by default the system has norm okay if you want to take it as uh, make it as a third party thing you have to overwrite it with b a n e b a n e 
the bands is a third party item. Okay. So if um, habitually you handle a certain article based on uh, as a third party item, which means you, you are, as a policy you never start that material. So whenever you get an order for that you pass it to the vendor. If that is the case you can go for changing the item category group into BANS so that the system automatically determines as TAS. Else you can overwrite the item category. Sirisha, can you mute your headphone? Else you can directly change the item category in your sales order. Okay. In my case, let me say that as of now I am running out of stock for that particular material. So that's the reason I am going for it, uh, it as a third party item. So T hyphen eighty one zero eight. Okay. On my order quantity is. Okay. Let me say this time I don't have enough stock. So that is why I am buying or asking my vendor to carry out it. And the system will automatically, by default, the system will determine it as TAN. Okay. So I am overwriting the TAN with TAS in the sales order. That is the only thing I do. Just because I have changed the item category, the item category controls the way how it is being built and uh, how it is being delivered. Okay. I go to schedule line first. Since the materials are not delivered from my place, okay, it is carried out from my vendor. So I don't actually deliver it. So I did not carry out any availability check. So the system, whatever quantity I can enter here, the system will automatically make it as a confirmed schedule line. And you can see there is a new button popping up or uh, that got up in this scenario, which is called a purchase requisition. So what happens is, the moment you save the sales order, the system is going to write here purchase requisition, which will be converted as a uh, purchase order by my merchandiser. Okay. So that purchase order is sent to the vendor and the delivery details is given as my customer in the purchase order, which means I am sending a purchase order to my vendor saying that I want to buy so and so good, but instead of delivering to my facility, you deliver it to my client's place. So that is what is going to happen. Okay. So if I go to the purchase requisition, I can see, I can see what are all the details that are required to create a purchase order. So who is carrying that purchasing activity, which group of people, when this purchase order is going to be released, okay. what is the price or purchasing price? I mean, here, I mean, for this article, it is still showing uh, PR00 missing. That is, the sales price is missing, but we have the purchase price. So, when you send to the vendor, so what is the price you are going to pay for him? And what is the ordering unit? So, the system has all the details that are required to create a purchase requisition. Okay, then I go to the conditions here. For this alone, I am PR. 00395. So let me save my sales order. Okay, this process, I mean, uh, this is purely uh, mix up of uh, MM as well as SD. MM, I mean, once you create a purchase requisition, which will be converted into a purchase order and uh, uh, Paying for uh, the invoices, that is the vendor payment, those things will be automatically uh, done by the MM people. Okay, so you, if you, I mean, uh, you can see that procedure and uh, try it. If you, if you are comfortable, that is fine. But if you are not comfortable with creating purchase orders or making incoming payments and other things, uh, don't worry about that because somebody else is always going to do that. Okay. So we have created a sales order. E zero two one one eight seven one. So the now why I am going into the sales order again because I want to see the purchase requisition which the system has created. I go select the schedule line. 
okay system has created a purchase request if you okay. now let me take the role of a merchandiser which means for a while i am going to act as a mm person and now i am going to convert this purchase requisition into a purchase order okay so my transaction is me21n okay which is to create the purchase requisition for the purchase order so the normally was ye yahan bhi ya b a n s yeah because the system has determined it as p a s as third party item so i go to here i choose my purchase requisition i told you like there is always a difference between a purchase requisition and a purchase order do anybody remember yeah exactly purchase requisition is a yeah whereas purchase order is a confirmed one or formed up one you are purchase requisition and need not be translated into purchase order exactly sometimes it can be the quantity can be added or removed similarly the materials or articles in the purchase requisition also can be added or subtracted So now what I did, I just selected that number from the document overview, and I just, I just dragged it towards the shopping cart. Okay. Purchase organization is one thousand for this. Okay, and for this, it's one thousand. I mean, like how we know that what is the material? I mean, who is the vendor and other things? That that's purely trial and error method here. So I was trying because this is a uh, MM thing. Okay. If any among consultant, that's why you 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 won't find this scenario in your certification material because it is a uh, that the among will take over. Okay. So for this, I am setting up the purchase price, so two seventy five euros. Okay. Let me check whether all the data are fine. Okay. Item over here. Now I am saving this purchase order. So, uh, like your uh, proof of delivery, this also works with the. in conjunction with your uh, receive uh, receivement uh, or uh, further activities in the towards the amount side for example like in proof of delivery either you can enter the proof of delivery manually or carry out the proof of delivery process manually or you can let the uh, uh, have the idoc system enabled in your uh, organization so that the customer can send the confirmation electronically so that it automatically adds your i mean updates your delivery after that only you will be able to create your sql dump error when accessing program what is that then it will run here last time it was in fine Similarly, here also, even though uh, the purchase order creation is done by the YMM, and the materials will be delivered to the customer before uh, until you receive. I mean, you pay for your vendor, you won't be able to. For I say invoice for your customer. Okay. Here also that confirmation plays a role. I am saving it. Yeah. 
ഇങ്ങനെ ജീവയും ഫുഡ് once you have created this purchase and go with the previously created documents okay so we are zero one one eight six five and i just think what i did that thing is sure and then one Okay, this is what I worked out last night, uh, so that everything moved smoothly. At that time, it worked fine. So, what happened? I created a sales order, then I went into the schedule line. The system had created the process repetition, that is 3356. and i created a process order for that so slash n n e 22 n right again as it for the last time and the last time she was working fine because normally I run these scenarios once before I go to bed so that morning when I start class for you people it should not be any problem so let's try with the other one the quantity and the speed is partially ordered ok the article slash n d a 01 let me discard that and so something here okay. instead of t a n i make it as t a s okay. so business transaction type one to be determined ok fine I go to the schedule line I could see the purchase requisition if I am just there in case 
สเวิทคลาสยันบีเอสีรถตู้วันวันอีกจะกันตุกโจทย์ที่จะดูไลฟ์สมัครเรียนเรียนโปรเซสต์ converting this process r e c o s i t i o n into process order from m e to one screen close click document o r d e r one select my process r e c o s i t i o n okay I must find the newly created one select that drag it drag it to the shipping cart Organization data, which I think is fine. Item overview. Okay. Let me check for this. In discrepancies in this process order data, no messages issued during the check. So let me save it. Yeah, this is regarding the purchase request. Whenever I try to, I don't know why. See, SQL error three one two seven. I have to ask the basis person why it is happening. So, hmm. Yeah. Uh, it it can be done manually, or it could be. Then automatically, that is the MM activity. Hmm. Yeah, just now, just like how we had our delivery due list, which means on the particular day we saw, okay, what are all the delivery uh, sales orders that are due for delivery today? How the system selected that? Similarly, the MM people will be having a Uh, what is saying that okay, these are all the purchase requisitions open right now. It has to be converted. Sometimes it happens like two or three purchase requisitions can be combined into a single purchase order, or a single purchase requisition can be split into more than one depending on the vendor. It happens. Okay. Yeah. Completely. That that depends on how smart you are. And first thing is the requirement must come from the business. So they they need to say like whenever somebody creates so and so, we must get those activities. I mean we must be intimated or. Uh, it must trigger for uh, approval or something. So first, uh, the requirement will be from the business, okay. and second, how it can be automated is taken. The start is taken by the other people, whomever designs your workflow. How smart they are, so, uh, that is equally uh, having a weightage in your workflow scenario. Yeah, yeah. Con responsibility in the sense that you will just give this message. That's it. You will give the text like this is how it has to, and we have to help them in the testing. That's it. Yeah, other than that, nothing you you can. I mean, there is nothing you can do in that actually, because everything is done. Yeah. Your activity is like you will be giving the specifications first to brief what the scenario is. Then, at the later stage, help them with the testing. Okay. Now I am here stuck with like how to proceed with here. So I mean, like what happens is like once I have created the purchase order here, I create here Miro. I mean Miro, which means the invoice payment. Since the goods hadn't come to us, okay, there won't be any incoming delivery, 
uh, the goods are not going from us so there won't be any outbound delivery also okay. so there won't be no inbound delivery or outbound delivery the goods directly go to the customer so once the customer confirms that he has received so and so you have to settle or pay your vendor first okay and um, only after you have paid your vendor you will be able to uh, pay for what you had uh, actually okay sold to your customer so here the billing is going to be order related billing not the delivery related billing because there is no delivery here okay if i try to create a, a billing for my order 11 Eight seven one. Okay. Then the system will say like this: item is not relevant for billing. This item is not relevant. But once I do the uh, invoice payment, that is the vendor payment. Then if I try to create this, the system will be allowing me to create this. This thing. Okay. So let me check with the basis paper. Okay. Thanks. Like why it has i mean like where it is failing and i i will get it recorded okay. yeah we create the purchase order next we we'll go to the miro slash n m i r o company code is 1000 you are paying your vendor here So here, here we'll be entering the. This is the last last night. It was working really fine. I don't know. What is that? Eight two thousand eleven. This this when zero uh, has been paid. That is why that is showing us zero zero. I really am not stuck with. I could have. Similarly, I tried for your inter company also. Inter company also, I was having some problem. Um. So, what is inter company? Okay. Yeah. You. I mean, like you. you there are many. Um, Okay, you have a conglomerate of companies. It means like uh, you have similar companies that belong to your own management that deal with um, almost let me say similar products. Okay, sometimes you receive an order, okay, but you don't have stock in your plant. Okay, instead you find this material in your conglomerate, but it is not the same company code. Okay. so you are telling them uh, okay you want to uh, tell them okay like uh, please deliver this material to my customer okay but if I, if they deliver the goods directly to the customer it becomes a third party sale okay instead what you do you in the sales order okay, so let me go to that i'll show you like here also there is some problem with the uh, copa that is the financial part C hyphen S two Y okay inter company okay before selling the pre request the that plant must be assigned to my com uh, my sales organization distribution channel combination okay and second thing is this material which I want to uh, use it as a inter company Sales process that must be maintained within that another plant also. Okay. So what I did, so I this material, okay, two fifty pieces. Okay. By default, the system will propose the delivering plant. Okay, how the system proposes the delivering plant? Can anybody say? First, where it will check? Yes, 
No. First it will check with the CMIR, Customer Material Info Record. Then it will come here. Yeah. Then it will come to the uh, Customer Master of the ship to party. If it doesn't find in both the places, then it will take it from the Material Master. Okay. So by default, the system proposes the delivering plant based on some rules. Okay. But after a while, uh, here you find that there is not enough stock in 1200. So you want your, uh, your sister concern or the another company to deliver it on behalf of you. So you are overwriting the plant with the new plant. Okay. The thing is like you must, okay, I am getting this rule. Better in derivation rule. Okay, mandatory. This PA01 is the inter company pricing, which means uh, you will be selling for a different rate to your customer, but when you are transferring it between you companies, you will be having some concessional rate. So let me say, like, uh, I am getting it for 325 or 350. 345, okay. So that is the intercompany price, PA01. So the system will take the price of this only. Okay. So here also I am getting this error in determination, I mean uh, derivation rule. So let me see, make some changes so that. So it is giving me a incomplete. If I try to edit it, it is asking for some profitability segment. So this also I have to check with any SA people. So today I am really stuck with. It's not a productive day. Not a productive class. Information about certification. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll do one thing. I will uh, 